In 2015, Elon Musk announced his newest venture, a communication satellite network for SpaceX. With the goal of revolutionizing the way we work, watch videos, and scroll through social media through thousands of communication satellites beaming reliable, high-speed broadband internet access straight into our homes from orbit. A bold proposal? Yes, but as far as Elon Musk's ideas go, it's certainly not the most unrealistic idea the multi-billionaire has put out there. In fact, over the last five years, SpaceX has made significant progress on its space-based internet program, trademarked as Starlink in 2017, a name based on John Green's book-to-screen adaptation, The Fault in Our Stars. The ambitious internet project was approved by the Federal Communications Commission in 2019 to build and launch almost 12,000 satellites into Earth's orbit, known as Constellation. So far, it's launched more than 1,000 up into outer space and plans to send up 4,425 by 2024, with advanced versions of the satellites in the works. There are also plans to launch 400 of them up in one single go with SpaceX's Starship rocket project which is currently under development and is set to play a big part in the company's Mars missions. SpaceX recently announced that Starlink, which is now worth $30 billion according to news reports, is going to conduct an initial public offering once it gets a sense of demand and cash flow, something that its COO, Gwyn Shotwell, has been hinting at for quite some time with statements like, Starlink is the right kind of business that we can go ahead and take public. Elon Musk had previously tweeted that it would probably go IPO, but not for several years. However, it seems the service can now go public a lot sooner, much to the delight of anyone suffering from super slow speeds out in the more remote parts of the world. Currently, Starlink is expanding the scope of its public beta test to include the US, Canada, and the UK. Here's everything you need to know about SpaceX's futuristic broadband service. Pre-orders are now open on Starlink's website, although it should be noted that deposits are fully refundable and that the service is not guaranteed. The company states that orders may take six months or more to fulfill depending on where you are in the world, and during the beta it's been clear that there will be brief periods of no connectivity at all as they improve their software and launch more satellites. Those lucky enough to get their hands on the beta kit will find a familiar looking Wi-Fi router and a swanky motorized user terminal dish the size of a pizza box that connects to a tripod and automatically adjusts its aim in line with the best satellite coverage. The whole setup process only takes around 10 minutes and the most challenging part is finding a spot outside with clear views of the sky. After that, all users need to do is connect the dish to the Starlink app on their phone. SpaceX has taken its Canadian beta testers into consideration too. The dishes are heated to keep them clear of snow and ice. No word yet on whether the cable is bear-proof though. So, what makes Starlink a better option than DSL, cable, or wireless broadband? Well, the main draw of the satellite system is that it claims to provide coverage for rural areas, which would be a godsend for those living in the countryside, as well as huge areas of the developing world where fiber optics and cable simply don't exist like they do in the big cities. 5G isn't a reliable alternative in many of the globe's mountainous regions due to the number of towers required. When Starlink goes public, the plan is to begin with coverage for the US and Canada before rapidly expanding to provide global coverage as early as next year. Starlink started testing the waters early in October 2020 across the northern US and southern Canada and has recorded over 10,000 users since it began. The consensus seems to be that it delivers on its promise to bring an improved level of broadband to rural locales. And there are plans to up speeds to 1 gigabyte per second to win a 16 billion contract from the FCC, almost 20 times faster than the initial beta. Current speeds of 50 megabits per second to 150 megabits per second are faster than many basic cable packages and DSL lines, and many are impressed with what the company has managed to achieve. The coverage comes at a cost though. Its basic hardware package is currently priced at $499 and you'll be paying $99 every month for the service, which isn't cheap compared to more traditional earthbound services. The Starlink program hasn't been without its controversy either. Astronomers have voiced their concerns about the satellites, stating that light pollution will mean the number of visible satellites in the constellation will actually outnumber the number of visible stars in the night sky, making it difficult to study real constellations. Not only that, but their optical brightness and radio wavelengths may have the potential to severely affect scientific observations. 
Because of the way Starlink can change its orbit autonomously, it's impossible for observations to be scheduled around Starlink. With several organizations such as the International Astronomical Union and the National Radio Astronomy Observatory releasing official statements of concern. Representatives from SpaceX and Musk himself have claimed these problems can easily be mitigated by pixel masking and image stacking. Though whether this is enough to waylay concerns remains to be seen. There has also been pushback over the amount of space debris the communication network will leave floating around in orbit. Sending thousands of satellites up there means a risk of collision, which could trigger a dangerous pinball effect between the satellites on Earth, which may cause them to become inoperable. The Starlink satellites are launched at lower altitudes and any failed satellites are designed to deorbit within five years. But even these pose a risk of collision. In fact, a near miss already occurred early on in the program between a Starlink satellite and a European Space Agency one. Since then, SpaceX has fixed an issue with its paging system that disrupted emails between itself and the ESA. Starlink isn't the only company to attempt something like this. The London-based OneWeb satellite constellation is its main competitor, with phase one of its plan set to be completed by 2022. Richard Branson's company initially planned to launch Amiga 650 satellites to provide broadband across the globe, but filed for bankruptcy in 2020 and laid off most of its employees. Despite this, OneWeb applied to the FCC to increase its number of satellites to a sky-high 48,000 and exited bankruptcy late last year thanks to an investment of US$1 billion from the UK government and Indian conglomerate Bharti Global. Earlier this year, it requested a modification to reduce the number of satellites back down to 6,372. Samsung could be another competitor to Starlink. In 2015, the company proposed plans for a 4,600 satellite constellation that could provide a zettabyte per month across the globe. That's around 200 gigs per month for 5 billion users. The company has been strangely quiet about its plans lately though, with no real information coming out since then. Amazon also plans to get involved with its project Cooper, which will release over 3,000 satellites within the next decade. Replying to a tweet asking for lower prices in developing countries where customers may not be able to afford Starlink, Elon Musk brought attention to the fact that this is a risky business. The world's richest man said in February this year, SpaceX needs to pass through a deep chasm of negative cash flow over the next year or so to make Starlink financially viable. Every new satellite constellation in history has gone bankrupt. We hope to be the first one that does not. It could very well be the case. Starlink's customers continue to grow with a huge demand from rural Canadian customers. Analysts believe it might take Starlink around 3 years and 3 million subs to start bringing in the positive cash flow. Of course, SpaceX isn't just concerned with life on the blue planet. With Musk's company planning to eventually colonize Mars, it has stated that positive cash flow from selling internet services will be integral to funding such a historic task, so there's a lot more than a good internet connection riding on Starlink's success. What do you think about Starlink's ambitious plan to bring broadband to the entire planet? Would you be interested in satellite-powered internet, or do the negatives outweigh the positives? Let us know in the comments down below and be sure to like the video and subscribe to the Tech Valley channel to see more videos on the world of technology and innovation every week.